could imagine an extremely rapidly developing fire on the top of the hillside just above the community of West Kelowna, a column that's reaching, you know, 3,000 feet in the air. The whole mountainside across the lake was covered in very tall flames. The trees were just absolutely engulfed in flames and it was like the biggest fire you would ever see. You can only imagine how the, the, the feeling and the sound of that fire front coming was it's kind of like a jet engine. The embers that are flying by you are going by you so fast it's almost as if you can't keep pace with the fire front. I remember the captain that was on the vessel that night called me on my cell phone saying, Chief, we have hot embers crossing the lake above us. When I got the call that the fire had jumped the lake, it was more of shock and disbelief. It was able to jump a three to five kilometer gap. I don't think anyone quite experiences our limitations on where we're allowed to grow. You know, we have a lake on one side of us, we've got mountains on the other, we're in a floodplain. Over 40% of our land base is in the agricultural land reserve, which means it can't be built on, but it's also a benefit because it creates a beautiful city. The lake is a significant growth constraint, but also one of the biggest attributes we have. So that's a really unique challenge, how we handle growth and make sure in the long run, 100 years later, Kelowna is still a beautiful place. The growth of Kelowna, you know, five to 6,000 people a year, has put significant pressure on us from a housing perspective, infrastructure. The first time I heard that number of 40% by 2041, it was, oh my, do we even have the space for that. It's basically building half of Kelowna in 16 years. As a result of that, the only option is to go up. I'm excited and optimistic about the future. And I'm a big believer that the urban environment, our, our cities and where people live, the quality of those cities uh, has a massive impact on people's quality of life. I've always been a very proud Kelowna resident and seeing the look on stakeholders' faces when they get immediate answers about their hometown, that's really rewarding. It makes me feel really proud to serve the city of Kelowna. And if I can help the city staff in any way make it a better place to live for its citizens, then that makes me feel really good. I live in the downtown area. I think it's a beautiful place to live. And that's why I'm passionate about maintaining quality data that helps the city grow. I love that it's challenging. I also love that it lets me be super creative. It's actually feel wonderful because we can use a new technology to make a city staff do their job easier and more efficient. Before the Enterprise License Agreement, I think we had seven hardcore GISers in the city, and I think we had five advanced licenses. It was a little bit like Hunger Games. I'd come in in the morning and there was nothing available and I had to figure out who's tying it up and then I'd have to call them and say, hey, are you using this? A lot of solutions I build, it actually may not be the solution I really want to build that way, but that's the best way to save credits because that is one of consideration. In order to get where we wanted to get to, in terms of our vision of how we see GIS at the city, there was no way we could have done it with the way we were set up. So we signed our license agreement and now I just go into work. I don't have to think about it. I just go in and I start my day and I do my work without being tied down with sort of the administrative side. We truly start to feel like we can encourage all the city staff to use the GIS tools as much as they want. Since we've gotten the ELA, anything is possible. We have every piece of Esri technology at our disposal. If you can dream it, we can, we can create it. Being able to have that geospatial strategy where we sit down for an hour to an hour and a half, sometimes even up to two hours with eight to ten people and just talk GIS and really helps us coordinate what we're going to do for the next three to four years. And we were able to then set those priorities and go, well, look, if I finish this thing first, I'm actually helping four departments. Let me get that done and then we'll get to your thing. Look, it's all in our roadmap, it makes sense, and everybody has bought into it. It's, it's, been, it's been a big win.
because we held the data quality and processing kind of close to our hearts, I personally was a little bit leery of opening up the, the doors and having other people outside of our direct team editing that information, but it's been a huge win. So I think kind of empowering those people to be able to make the changes themselves and be confident in the data um, was super important for us. And now that we are kind of seeing data as a corporate asset, which is providing value to other teams, that data governance strategy is really going to help us trust that data even more. And we don't need the Kevins of the world to scour through everything to feel confident that the data is good so we can put it in the digital twin. The whole point of Model City was at the time, back in 2018, we didn't know we had the capacity. And so that's actually why Model City was created, was for our 2040 OCP to look into, do we even have the space to grow? Model City is a digital twin of our city and it allows us to actually see what's on the ground in a GIS system. And Model City was able to demonstrate that we have more than enough capacity to build. Model City was able to demonstrate that we have substantial capacity to grow. And our long-term vision for Kelowna gives us room for decades of development. Well, I think using GIS uh, geospatial data for decisions makes the decisions not only easier and more defendable, but it helps you bring people along. So when they can see what you're building or what you're planning to design or deliver with the data beside it, it makes for a much easier conversation. There isn't skepticism. We have this toolbox that allows us just to keep moving forward and ask those questions pretty quickly. We can even start asking those what if questions. So we are able to ask, you know, what happens if we grow up in the hills? And we can run it through the Model City infrastructure module and say, you know, these are what the costs would look like. Model City infrastructure can tell us that actually if we focus on redeveloping existing neighborhoods and onboarding more housing opportunities and, you know, investing in things like, like transit and having more local services, the long-term cost to replace all that stuff is actually much lower. Seeing the look on the stakeholders' faces, the planners' faces, the, the engineers' faces, when I can answer the, a question that they have, that they expect me to get back to them in a month and I get back to them in a couple minutes is, is pretty rewarding. The, the running joke, and it's not a joke, it's dead serious. I'm going to retire on Model City. The sky's the limit on it. Explore 3D Kelowna is a tool we build basically to show people what the potential building will look like. You can rotate, you can tilt, it's much better way so, and more like a reality. 15 years ago, we might have a lineup of people at a public hearing concerned about a tower project. And now, because they can see and feel it, very few people show up or are concerned about high density development in our city. Whenever I found that city staff use the GIS tools I create, help them doing their daily job, make their life easy. I just feel super happy because I know at the end of the day, my work means something to all the staff. I was getting ready to go to bed and I thought I would check my phone one more time and I looked and someone had commented and said that the fire jumped the lake and I shot out of bed and said, we have to go and we scrambled and took off. It was scary. A big fire truck, you know, going in front of our house, lights, sirens on. Um, the fireman gets out of the truck and he's yelling, like, get everybody out of their houses. That was super scary. I was sitting beside two staffers who put evacuation orders up and said, well, I can't go home tonight. I have nowhere to sleep. Those, that hit hard, realizing that my colleagues could be losing their houses at any minute. Working with the Emergency Operations Center, some of our GIS specialists that were in the room reached out to me and said, how can they support the fire? And I said, can they find like hot spots? And they said, yeah, we can like literally fly an area in a grid and, and place mark exactly where hot spots are. With the drones that were flying at night, we were able to identify these hot spots within the landfill that we were able to then action during the day. We cleaned up the hot spots within a day, which probably would have normally taken us four to five days to do that. So residents were able to get back near their homes, you know, probably three or four days in advance of what we normally could have done. 
the one thing I really do like about my job is I get to do that. I get to help. Because that feeling of helplessness, I actually get to go in and actually do something. And that's, it's pretty powerful. We have a very strong working relationship with our GIS team, and we've created a, a robust system to be able to respond to our community based on that new technology. And we're sharing each other's kind of strengths, and I, I think we're getting to be pretty good at it. Yeah, supporting the teams, I think, is, is really key. We have to have some humility and recognize that regardless of where you are in the organization, you probably have something significant to contribute. I think we're successful because of the culture of collaboration. Failure is okay. I don't get a lot of pressure if we fail our first try. You know, there's a lot of trial and error. It's like, yeah, but that didn't work, but we could, we're really close. Let's try again. Every day I'm happy to come to work. I'm excited to go to work. I'm excited to see what's next. I think when we see our work kind of on public facing platforms, whether that's on the website or um, in the news, it's a super cool feeling. You know, you feel kind of like you accomplished something. I, I don't know why more cities haven't done it. It's, it's all sitting there. It's all sitting in our databases. Any municipality has the staff with the training to do what we're doing. They just need that push. They need that top-down approach that says, I want you guys to do this. I, I want to empower you to do this. Don't be afraid to make those risks. If I was to share a message with my colleagues, get to know your GIS specialists in your community. Share with them the business that you do and how their technology and their work can make your firefighters' lives safer. I'm pretty excited about what's coming, how we're able to use our geospatial data and, and look out into the future and get that idea where we're going to be a lot more proactive than reactive is, is pretty exciting.